This is the 2024 Ford Ranger. That is the old Ranger. Today, we're gonna find out if the new Ranger is worth over that. Let's roll. Before we compare these two, special thanks goes to our great friends at Markville Ford Lincoln. They're a Ford and a Lincoln dealership located in Unionville, Ontario, just north of Toronto. They were kind enough to provide these two models, the old generation Ranger and the new generation Ranger. If you want to check out either or, don't forget, check out the link in the description below. Maybe you want to take the new one for a test drive or you still love the old Ranger. Let's start first with the exterior design. How different are these two? Well, of course, side by side, you can tell right away. This is a bit more boxy, that curvy. The grille is much bigger in this case, including the Ford logo in the front. Then you've got the headlights, which now have this design called C, like a clamp. That's the idea behind this. You also have two projectors for the LED headlights. These are the performance LED headlamps. And then on this side, unfortunately, this is the XLT, so it's not the Lariat. This is the Lariat, so we don't have all the tech features that the Lariat offers. But you can tell the headlight is much smaller in this case, more curvy, including the grille being smaller. I like this. This is bolder. It's more aggressive. It looks great, including the bottom part that looks different in design. Also a two-tone color that has a bit more of that chrome and aluminum finish. Meanwhile, the top part, it's sort of a glossy black, and then you have gray in the middle. Love the overall design. In terms of dimensions, the older model is slightly longer in comparison to that. The new one has a bigger wheelbase in comparison to the outgoing model. Side profile, wheel well. We have two-tone finish in this case, 18-inch wheels, different wheels. And then moving on to the side, we've got this side scoop here, which the design is different and it also says the trim in this case is the lariat in the one in the old one it says xlt because of the xlt trim then with this package they're offering a side step which kind of reduces the overall ground clearance a bit but it also helps with people that have a hard time jumping into although this is not an f-150 but let's just say you have that issue the side mirror although the design looks very similar to the outgoing model with this package you get of course the turning signal and a glossy black finish and we've got a 360 camera package which has the camera right in this place door handles different than the outgoing model and you also have a touch option to lock and unlock the vehicle the door overall the window over here bigger than the outgoing model it gives you better visibility which is great then moving on to the bad side shape is about the same the difference is that this is a two-tone we've got the black exterior with the gray paint over in this side and then if you come closer towards the end in each side the new ranger offers a side step so you have an easy access to the bed you can just jump on top of it by using that option and underneath that to make sure that your feet stay warm is the exhaust pipe one thing you notice with this package is that you still get that pad for the code so you can lock the vehicle from outside while leaving the key inside right in here. These are actual buttons. On top of that, the door handle does have, in case, if the automatic option doesn't work, a key insert so you can open it with the key located in the key fob. Let's move on to the rear end. Of course, different design. Now, the taillights are very similar in terms of the shape but the internals are differently designed in comparison to the 2023 uh, model, the outgoing model in this case. But overall, the actual design is very, very similar. Another thing that's different in here is the fact that in this one, the 2024 model, this is not completely flat. You have this curved area where it says Ranger, which is still available with the 2024 model, so that people behind you know that this is the Ranger, in case if they can confuse with the F-150. And then you've got the big ford badge right in the center same thing with the bumper similar design slightly larger in this one and one thing that i noticed with this it has the soft opening now that could be because this is the lariat package 
that's the XLT. I don't recall having that option on the Elariot on the 2023 model. I could be wrong, but I don't remember this feature being in there. Next thing you notice that this has a meter in case if you need to measure anything, similar to what they do with the F-150, which is actually located on top of the tailgates. This one is located right at the edge, a useful feature. Next thing, if you come closer, the new Ford Ranger offers 12 volt plug here, the cigarette lighter, and you've got 120 volts on this side, something that the outgoing model didn't offer. In terms of the bed size, the previous model offers a five foot and a six foot. This year, you only get a five foot with four doors, of course, with five seats. Now, the reason it's probably because they didn't sell well the six foot, so they only offer this one. In terms of the design here, we've got an automatic window, which you can open from inside and you've got your bed light at the top and the brake light one thing i noticed is that it actually looks very much the same as the outgoing model jumping into the old one they both offer essentially the same amount of space in here and it looks exactly the same as the old one in the new one so it's not very very different in terms of that cargo space and we could probably pull this one too, which here you go. Now there's no subwoofer in the back here, but you get extra space, something that that new one didn't offer. Next thing I noticed, the handles in here are very much like the one in the F-150, which is a nice touch. And let's jump inside. Space. I set the seat in front as if I was the driver, so that will give you an idea. I'm 6'2", how much space you get overall. This one is not set in the same position. It's nice, it's comfortable. I could sit in the back. I have lots of headroom, not that bad. We'll jump into the old one too, just to see the difference. And then we've got some space here to essentially slide your phone or your wallet right in the center. There is a USB port and a USB-C port and 120 volts charge in the back, which is nice. There's no actual roof or like a panoramic roof or a sunroof with this package, which I think would have been quite nice. But that's about it. Massive window. That's one thing. One, that's one thing I noticed with this. Let's jump into the old one. Uh, I don't think I have to say much. In terms of space, I've set the seat in the front as I was a driver, so that should tell you. There's my my head is touching the roof. One um, leg room is very tight unless I go right in the middle here. And that's about it. There's some space in the center. There's two USB ports, 110 volts charging. And that's about it. Not enough space. Okay, let's jump into the first row. Here's an interesting fact. I drove last year the new Ford Ranger Raptor before it even came to Canada or United States. I drove it in Ireland on the other side, it was pretty awkward, I have to say. So I've driven even the standard one in Europe. And one thing I would like to mention is the fact that the interior in the European one was slightly different in some ways. Also, the build quality was slightly different. Not a lot better, but it was slightly diff different. Now, what's new with this 2024 model? The first thing you notice when you jump inside is this massive 12.4 inch screen for your infotainment, which is very noticeable. Then you've got a digital cluster on this side. But before we talk further, let's start it up. It is a start button. With the XLT on that side, you get the old fashioned key, crank it up kind of thing. This, on the other hand, it's an actual push button, which is nice, it's located just right on the steering column. And then you can adjust the steering column manually, which is really nice. And you've got a different design from the shift knob, the climate unit buttons are different, massive screen, massive air vents, more space on the passenger sides. We've got this one at the top and you've got one underneath there. Air vents are very noticeable, but these air vents actually match the grill in the front, which is a nice touch, I have to say. The steering wheel is nice and grippy. You've got amazing grip on the sides. Everything is designed well. Now let's get into the details. We'll start first with this side. The steering wheel is nice and grippy, thick, beautiful stitching all around. On the right side, you've got your menu controls, 
you've got the audio answer calls on the left side it's your radio with volume you've got your cruise control lane assist uh, limit speeds gap assist and so on which we'll try once we go for a drive but that's about it then you have a digital cluster lots of information it kind of reminds me a bit of the ford f-150 similar design you got your built-in navigation in this case you've got your view you've got the off-road package with this one here uh, you've got your pitch and roll driver assist and off-road status which is nice there you go it shows you the drivetrain then you can go into different driving modes you got your normal uh, there is eco there is sport then you've got your tow and haul and then you've got your slippery and then you've got mud and ruts all these different modes and it changes the layout and you've got sands which now is shifting into four by four but that's about it these are some of the things that it offers with this uh layered package you've got your normal which is in blue which i think is quite nice this is the new infotainment layout from ford It's something you have seen in the maquis the f-150 f-150 lightning this is exactly what you see in this one here too although not similar to the one in force you got your settings at the top you can also play sketch in here so if you're sitting somewhere waiting for your wife to finish her shopping or your husband at the Canadian Tire, you can play sketch with this, which is a nice game. Whatever, I don't use it much, but it's a nice touch. You've got your Apple CarPlay Android Auto app built in. It does have navigation built in, although most people don't use this because of their Apple CarPlay. You've got your tow modes, which helps you with towing. Um, something to keep in mind, this one tows up to 7,500 pounds, which is similar to the outgoing model. Uh, you can add your trailer so that it helps you with towing at the top you have your camera i don't remember the lariat older gen having a 360 camera but this is one that you get with the new one you've got your zoom options you can zoom in different parts uh, which is nice because it is a pickup truck you can zoom out and at the top is your backup camera at the bottom we've got your climate unit heated seats and heated steering wheel no ventilated seats with this package uh, for, for both driver and passenger you've got heated seats and also power seats which is nice then it's your climate unit raise the temperature lower the temperature your ac and so on so these stay here at all the time because you have easy access then that's about it into the main menu checklist you go into the settings now that's all the settings for your vehicle this has over the internet software update for the system and you do get zone lightning that's something that you have offered, something you get with a Ford F-150. That's something that a lot of other trucks don't offer. So in this case, you can light up different areas around the vehicle. This is a really great option at night, which I'm a big fan of. Then if you got a sound system, this sound system is powered by b which is really nice in a pickup truck. And you can adjust the volume, you can adjust the position of the audio, whether you want it in different sides of the vehicle inside. You've got your driver system package, cruise control, speed limit, lane keeping assist, pre-collision, all the tech features, all the safety features that you need in a 2024 model right here. And another thing, if you don't know what these means, you've got the eye icon. It tells you exactly what it does, which is nice and handy. Then you've got your rear view mirror camera delay, blind spot assist information, more settings to go through, a lot of information that you can control from here, connectivity for your phone, wireless connectivity in this case, hotspot as well, and general. So a lot of things has, have changed in comparison to the outgoing model. This is more advanced, more technology advanced in this case. And here you go, that's the trailer assist is telling you how to attach it, how to do everything, which is really nice i like this and go into reverse park assist we've got all the sensors and you can change the view and you, this is your tow mode you still get buttons for the climate unit which i really appreciate it's right in here for your temperature the fan speed and so on it's right in there which is nice and then underneath that there is a wireless charging pad you slide your phone and you can charge it all the time in front of the actual gear knob you have more space there is more space onto that side and this is your new gear shifter in comparison to the old model which was essentially a long one that went up to like here this one is a small one and what you do is there's a button at the front you press that and you're going to drive and then when you press it again you go into neutral press it again you go into reverse and you go into park 
on the side over here these your manual mode manual shift in this case you press the button to manual and then you can use these individually which is quite nice and there you go there are more buttons in here you've got your park assist traction off auto starts and this is your off-road this is essentially your first view to off-road experience uh, in case if you wanted to go off-road this you press this button gives you the camera in the front and your tire pressure you got your trailer assist you can lock the differential as well and it tells you where the power is going the most and then on this side we've got this for your driving modes you can switch to go into different driving modes you got two wheel high four wheel high and four wheel low and this one i'm not sure it's probably for the raptor in this case but this is what they offer with this one this is something similar you have seen in the ford bronco the outgoing ford ranger used a four cylinder 2.3 liter ecoboost and this one makes about 270 horsepower the new one offers very similar engine to that a 2.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine ecoboost makes 270 horsepower but with the new ranger you get a 2.7 liter v6 twin turbocharged engine that makes 315 brake horsepower that's similar engine that you get in the uh, ford bronco now here's another interesting fact for the first time ford is going to offer a ford ranger raptor which again i already drove it was amazing i have to say it was really good and i'm looking forward to drive it again in canada that one makes about 400 horsepower but that's the first time they offer this uh, engine and this Bron this ford ranger raptor for north america which i think it's going to sell like a hot cake but even this you've got this engine that you see in here here's some of the differences that we noticed in terms of the engine bay first thing it's a much larger bay in comparison to the outgoing model because now you have to fit a v6 in here everything in here it's spread it everywhere and there's a ton of space next thing we notice is the air box in the old one you only have one intake spot in this one you've got two one that is located right in the front here and then one at the usual spot also the intake box is smaller in the new model another thing we noticed is the intake manifold which is slightly smaller in the new one in comparison to the outgoing model this new one comes with two fans you've got one in here and one on this side meanwhile the 2023 model has only one sport mode on pedal to the metal and we go come on ford there we go nice this thing drives so differently from that older model and initially i just didn't think it would be that different because the chassis is the same, body on frame, you've got suspension system very similar, maybe tuned differently, uh, same engine. Nice. I can't wait to drive the 2.7 V6 turbocharged engine because I have driven in a Bronco, but it'd be interesting to see in this one, maybe because the curb weight is slightly different. I love how this thing drives here's what i didn't like about the old ranger think about this being the truck one thing i felt with that truck was that the rear end was doing this most of the time completely out of balance this is not the case here it actually drives so much better the suspension is well balanced overall the body doesn't feel a lot of that uh, boat rides it actually feels a bit like an suv weirdly and then you look back and you realize it's a pickup truck um, there's so much space in here it's nicer inside it's nice to be in the cabin that's what matters um, with the new digital screen this massive screen in the center which to some people might be a bit much i think it's fine there's still some buttons visibility is great mirrors are great the mirrors the side mirrors give you also great visibility the road noise is another thing I noticed with this. You don't hear the road noise as much as the 2023 uh, and below the previous gen. The 10th speed in this truck is perfect. When I drove the Ranger Raptor, that, in my opinion, was 
better than the standard F-150. Yes, it's crazy to say that, but I truly believe it is better than the F-150. Why? It's smaller. It's a lot fun to drive. It's quick. It pulls hard. It sounded great. This, on the other hand, if I had to pick, I would go for the V6, the 2.7 liter. And the fact that you can't get that in the previous gen is a huge win. It's a huge win for the new generation. The steering wheel feels light, easy to use. Uh, brakes feel also pretty good, soft touch. When you put your foot down, it pulls. It actually pulls with that four cylinder. I can't wait to drive the 2.7 liter engine. That thing, it's gonna be a lot better for sure in terms of power delivery. If you're looking for fuel efficiency, this might be the better choice. To wrap this up, is the new Ford Ranger worth over the old one? And the answer is simply yes. You get different engine, more power, more tech features, more space on the inside, looks different on the outside. You got a Ranger Raptor this year, which I think is even more important. That's not to say that this is a bad value. I still think it's a great option if you want it and you can find them for a lot less money. But in some cases, if you're looking to lease, for example, interest rates will be better for a new truck than an old one, and you can't even lease this one. So I do think that this could be the best option out of the two. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and check out my other videos on my channel.